welcome! In this video, I'm going to teach you how to play any chord. Chords can seem really intimidating and confusing, but at the end of the day, they don't have to be. Every single chord is designed using a very specific formula. And in this lesson, not only am I gonna guide you through the process of how to create 12 different types of chords, we've also got a download for you below this video that will give you all of the formulas. So you can print that out, practice this at home in any and every single key that you'd like to. So let's dive in. Okay, so we're going to be building every single chord in this lesson based on the C major scale. And once you've learned how to do this here, you can apply this to any key you want. So to begin, let's just take a look. In C major, we have all white keys. So this is the one, this is the first note. This is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, this is six, this is seven, and then it takes us back to our one. So knowing these numbers, these degrees of the scale is super important to understanding how to use these formulas to build the chords. Now the first chord we're gonna build is a major chord, and the formula for this is one, three, five. So all that means is we look at our scale, so if we're building a major chord on C, we're gonna use the one, the three, and the five of the C major scale. One, three, and five. And ta-da, you've got a major chord. Now the next chord we're gonna build is a minor chord. This is built using the one, the flat three, and the five. So you might be thinking, what on earth is a flat three? Well, here's our three, and we're simply going to flatten it. And to do that, we lower it by a half step. So we just move down to the next possible note. So here's the flat three, and here's the five. So there is a C minor chord. It's awesome. Next, we're gonna build a diminished chord. These are a moodier sounding chord. They're kinda, I, I find them to sound kind of crunchy. And this is made using the one, the flat three, and the flat five. So just start by finding the one, the three, and the five, and then you're gonna flatten that three, and you're gonna flatten that five. So they both come down a half step. It gives you a diminished chord. Very ominous sounding. Next, we have an augmented chord. So we'll start with the one, the three, and the five, and then we'll simply sharpen that five. And that just means to go up a half step instead of down. So flat is down, sharp is up. So there is our augmented chord. Major chord and augmented. Sounds kind of cool. Next, we're gonna move into sevenths. Now, seventh chords, well, they're just, they just sound amazing. There's another note to enjoy. So to build a major seven, it's got the same structure as a major chord, the one, the three, and the five. And to build a major seven, you simply add the seven, the seventh note of the major scale. This is a C major seven. To play a minor seven, we're gonna play a one, a flat three, and a five, and a flat seven. So if the sevens normally B, we're gonna bring that down a half step to make it flat. And there's our minor seven. Next, we have the dominant seventh. So this one's built using the one, the three, the five, and the flat seven. So here's your seven, flatten it. You've got a C dominant seven. It's also sometimes referred to as a C seven. Next, we have an augmented seventh. So if you remember from before, augmented was when we had the one, the three, the five, but the five was sharpened. So that's our sort of beginning structure. And then we've got the flat seven on top. I don't love the sound of this chord. <laughs> but it exists and it's good to know how to play though. Next, we're gonna look at something called a dominant seven flat five. So we're going to be playing the one, the three, the five flattened, and the seven flattened. Dominant seven flat five. Another way to think about building that is if you've got your dominant sevens memorized, one, three, five flat seven, you can start there and then just flatten that five once you've got that structure. Next, we're looking at a minor major seven. So this one's built using the one, the flat three, and the five, which is a minor chord, and then we're just adding the major seven. Oh, that's very James Bond-esque. Love it. Then we have a half diminished. Um, and this one's also been referred to as a minor seven flat five. So they could go by both names. We've got minor, so one, flat three, flat five, and flat seven. When I build these, I build a minor seven first, one, flat three, five, and flat seven, and then I just flatten that five, because the instructions tell you minor seven, flat five. And there it is, or half diminished, same difference. 
And finally, we have the diminished seventh chord. So a diminished seventh is made of the one, the flat three, the flat five, and this is crazy, the double flat seven. So when you see a double flat, it just means to make it flat two times. So if normally your, your seven is B, you're gonna go flat once, and you're gonna go flat twice. And that gives you a diminished seven. Now there's a reason that they do the double flat there. Uh, the reason for that is, is that you want to use your note names sort of consecutively. You'll notice we move from C to E flat. We're going to call this note G flat because we want to go C, D, E, E, F, G. And then the next letter that we want to use is G, A, B. And in order to do that, because the note we're playing is technically an A, in order to do that, we're going to call it a B double flat. And that gives us exactly what we need. And the thing with diminished chords is if you want like a super fast way to build them on any note, you can just think of building a stack of minor thirds. Pick a note, go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Three half steps makes a minor third and boom, you've got your diminished chord. So those are the formulas for a lot of different chords. It's gonna take time and practice to gain confidence building these and to memorize them all, but this is a great starting point. So I highly recommend you print off the little cheat sheet with all of the formulas, get comfortable in the key of C. Then once you're comfortable there, pick another key. It feels really natural to move to G next because G has one sharp. And then you could apply these same principles. So you just look at the G major scale. The difference is F is sharp always when you play G major. So when you're building your scales, for example, if you were to build um, a major seventh, you go one, three, five, and this is the seventh note. Make sure you're playing that as that F sharp and you've got it and you're good to go. So I hope you found this lesson helpful. Comment below if you have any chord questions and let me know what your favorite chord is. Happy practicing and I'll see you around.